Bonjour, bonjour, Shopify world. We are back with another coding video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to add your own font or someone else's font that you are registered to use commercially to your Shopify store so that, you know, you have a different font and it looks better. We're going to do some coding for this step by step. I'm going to explain to you how let's just jump straight into the demo store. Okay. We are into the demo store right here. Let me actually show you what it currently looks like. So, you know, I'm not bamboozling you. Um, this is what it looks like. Pretty straightforward. The current font, so let's here, we do right click inspect the current font of this particular element is called a uh, font work song, song sheriff. Here we go. Font family. So we're going to change this particular one. Let's go. Let's do this. So first and foremost, we're going to find the font that we need and we're going to download it. So, uh, so here we go. Free commercial use fonts for a thousand and one fonts. Um, here, this one, let's click on this one. Um, it's free for commercial use, which is fantastic. I personally don't particularly like it, but you know, as they say in French, les goûts et les couleurs ne se discutent pas. Um, there is a zip file that is opened. Perfect. Let's look at that zip file right here from Scriptina. And here we see we have a TTF file and a text file, which is a readme file. Uh, let's take a quick look. That says how we can use this font. Okay. Now the font is actually in the TTF file. There is a small issue though, is that Shopify will not recognize this TTF file and will have to convert it. Your font will only work if it is in a WOFF format or in a WOFF2 format, which might seem like an issue, but no worries. That's why there is online converters. So let's convert those files. Um, the easiest way is I found a little website right here. Um, fontconverter.net. Let's go to that. So we go to fontconverter.net. Perfect. This is what it looks like. Select the file you want to convert. So we're going to browse. Um, that's not the right one. Downloads Scriptina. And here is our Scriptina TTF file. Um, I want it in a, let's do a W O F F two, but again, a W O F F would be fine as well. I hereby confirm I have the license. Yes, because it's a free font. Um, download your converted font as a zip scriptina one. It is called, and right here is our font W F W O F F two. Perfect. Now we have the correct font uh, format, file format. Ooh. Now we can close all of this. Um, let's close this as well. So now what? What's the next step? The next step is we're going to jump into the code. So you're going to go to online store right here. And voila, we are on the online store. Now, this is very important. As I say in all my dev videos, make sure to create a duplicate of your theme. Otherwise, if you make a mess up, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So super important actions duplicate, and we're going to be working on this duplicate right here. So now we wait a second until it is completely copied and then we're ready to jump into the code. All right, that is done. So now on the copy of the version we want to, so on the backup, basically, that's the version we're going to work on. We're going to click actions. And then we're going to click edit code. It's going to open up the lovely code editor. And on the very left, we're going to scroll all the way down, not all the way up, all the way down to assets. In the asset folder, you'll find the team.scss.liquid. You want to click on that one. And there is a huge file that's going to open up. The SCSS file is basically all the CSS of your store. And that's everything that makes your store pretty. So the spacing, the colors, the fonts, and all of these fun little things. We're going to scroll all the way down here, right here, all the way down. And we're going to add our pieces of code. So we do enter a couple of times to create new lines, some spacing. Then we do double slash. 
and we say new newly installed font code start. Then we do enter, enter, two front faces, and we do again a newly installed font code end. What is this? This is basically little comments that help any future developers who walk into your store find immediately what this code is for. If you don't do that, it's gonna take him or her hours to figure it out. But if you comment your code well, it's gonna save you, you, a whole bunch of money down the line when someone else needs to work on your store. So please do it. All right. So right here, we're gonna paste a piece of code that I've provided in the link below. It's in step two and it starts with an at. So make sure that you grab that entire section, you copy it, and then you just paste it right here. Control, a paste. Uh, I'm going to indent this just to make it prettier and easier to read. No, it's one too much like that. That way it's more manageable for anyone. Um, that needs to deal with this in the future. And we're going to have to make a couple of modifications. So font family, it says a name of the font. We're going to need to change that in script scripting, I think it's called. So I'm just uh, going to take that name to make sure it's a, oh, so I'm just going to go into my font size and I'm going to take that name and I'm going to copy paste it to make sure it's exactly the same because otherwise if I do a typo, it might not work and it's going to take me hours to figure out why it doesn't work and it would be a bummer. I'm going to replace this by the name of the font. Paste. See? See what I did there? I messed up because there is an S right here. All right, after that, we're going to do URL. So again, we change it by the name of the font, a scripting, and right here, we paste it again, a scripting. There we go. Then under this, we're gonna uh, paste something else. Another piece of code that I've provided. We're going to leave it at that right now, but uh, we're going to come back in this in an instant where we're going to have to change the your CSS selector. Um, currently, we can just save it. The asset is saved. And now we're going to have to upload the actual uh, font file. So for that, we're going to create add a new asset. We're going to upload a file and we're going to upload the correct file. Scriptina fonts scripting and we upload the asset. Scripting.woff. By the way, in my case, it's a WOFF2, so make sure that's the case right here. Okay, so now the font file is actually added to your code. Your code knows the font file exists. There is just one little issue left, is that your code doesn't know which elements on your site, and let me show you what I mean when I say which elements, which elements on your site need to have this font? Does this element needs to have the font? Does this one need to have the font? Does this one need to have the font? We don't know yet because you haven't told it. And that's what we're going to do right now. So the easiest way to do it is let's say we want it on all major headings. That way we do, we go on our website and we figure out how these headings are named. So we do right click inspect. We can do this little mouse right here and we select the area that we want to. See, that's not the area. This is not it. This is it because it tells us the font name and the font size. But what it also tells you is that it's an H1, header one, that's called mega title, a mega title large. So if I tell my code right now, hey, apply my new font to all of the H1, it's going to apply to all of the H1s across the entire website. 
if I say no, 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 just apply it to the mega title, it's going to apply it to all of the areas on the website that have the name mega title in their class. It's kind of like an identifier. Um, no, if I say just do it to the mega title large, it's going to do it to all the ones that are mega title large. I can also say just do it to the H2s, which I'm assuming this is an example of an H2, or to a, an H3 maybe. Is this an H3? Can I can I select it? Uh, I can't select that. Um, or maybe to paragraphs and things like that. This is probably going to be a paragraph. Oh, a link. Here is a P, so that refers to paragraph. Let's say I want to apply it to all of the H1s. Well, no problem. I'm going to go back into my code. And just to clarify, this right here is an H1. You just click on it and you see H1 right here, or you select it, H1 in the very top there, uh, here. <laughs> um, so you go back into the code. All right, so right here, we're gonna change that CSS selector to represent the first heading, like we said. So we do H1. Um, and then right here, it says, well, font family, what's the name of your font? So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna make sure I write the right name, script team. I'm gonna save that. We're gonna go into our online store actions and preview boom isn't that a sexy font um, now you might say andrew it's only applicable to this one yes that's true because we only set h1 so it's not going to be applied to other elements in your store what if you want to change that well that's a very good question you can start by going back into the code doing edit code then going back into your team.scss file you go all the way down in here, you can add multiple elements, separating with a comma. For example, I also want all H2s. I also want all H3s. I also want all paragraphs. So we can save that. The asset is saved. Let's take a look. We do a little refresh. Oh God, this is such a beautiful font. It's gonna sell like cupcakes. Okay, but Andrew, there's still an issue. I did H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. There's still elements that are not being translated into that font. All right, the easiest way at that point is to look it up by idea. You see H1, H2, H3, and paragraphs are just very general terms in CSS. You can also name a specific um, text, name a specific area of text with a class or even more specifically with an ID. So the easiest way to do it is just check out which class name it has. So for example, here you wanna change these ones. You click on it and you will see, oh, I can maybe just do body. Body. How much is that gonna convert? Oh, so much more is converted. Now that I wrote body, but there is still elements that are not being translated in my font, Andrew. All right, all right. Let's find the specific elements. So let's say watch here isn't being translated. So you click on it and then you're going to find the product name, grid view item. Right here it says that it's a grid view item is the name grid view item underscore image dash calculator full width links. Now, which font does this have? Work saw sheriff, but we've overwritten that. Hmm. It says it's supposed to be scripting, but something has overwritten our font. Meaning there is another code somewhere that says, no, 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 ignore scripting. You're just going to overwrite it. And this is where, oh, here there is a style tag. What is that style tag doing here? So this is where it becomes a, a debugging effort in some sort. So dot button, the class name of this section is called button. So we can add to our list, comma, space, dot, btm, the same way that it's written here. If it says 
BTN2 or BTNMMMMM, then here you would write BTM2 or BTMMMMM. Just copy it exactly like the class name you see. So if we do it like that, we save, we wait for it to be saved, we refresh. Normally these buttons should have our awesome font. Look at that. But there is still this area that bothers me. Let's look, how come? Oh, because it's an A link. What if I do, I add to this right here, uh, space A comma. So now I'm saying A means link. All the links, add them as well, save. Oh, here's another example of one that hasn't been translated yet. So we can hover over it. We figure out which um, font it's named. So we scroll down in the list here until we come across, oh, work sans sheriff, body, input, text area, button, select, just regular button. All right, and that is it. So you can play around like that. You can add all the sections that you need. And if you add enough sections and if your team is written decently easily, um, you can just change it all. Now, many of you will ask, why can I not make it so it appears in the customizer, my font? Well, that's only for Google fonts and I'll cover how to add your font to that list in the customizer. Let me show you which one I'm talking about into a separate video. Um, oh, by the way, our version is not live yet, so make sure to publish it live by clicking publish. And now our beautiful font is live. And so in another video, I'll talk about how you can add your font to the customization section right here. So I think it's in team settings, um, typography, how you would be able to change your font here. Now there are some limitations and you can't add a random font like we just did to the selection list. All right, that was it for me. I hope you were able to add your font to your website. There is a coding video like this every Thursday. Make sure to check out all the other coding videos. I also talk about strategy, how to make more money on your Shopify store. Make sure to check those out on Wednesdays. My name is Andrew from ecomexperts.io and it would mean the world to me if you like, subscribe and share this channel with a friend. It's literally the only pat on the back my team and I get for making these videos. Thank you very much and adios. Thank you.